January, the start of a new year. I'm not the sort to declare resolutions, however, this year I've decided to focus on new growth. This is a story about that. If you're a longtime viewer, you've probably noticed you haven't seen much from me for a while. I hope to change that. If you are a new viewer and just want to see me make a stool, then you should stick around. This video will be packed with useful stuff, I promise. In 2022, I took a step back from content creation to focus on other aspects of my life. Get back to center, organize my process, and try to figure out why I do what I do. In 2015, I started this channel to express my love of craft, and I feel like I need to get back to that. Loving the process and doing meaningful work, whether it's the actual piece itself or inspiring someone to make something themselves. I could have made a stand a lot of different ways, but trying to get back to basics and fundamental skill builders, I thought I'd try my hand at a staked piece of furniture. A three-legged stool. Simple in form and function, but rock solid. There is a wealth of knowledge on the subject of staked furniture. Furniture maker, craft historian, and writer Christopher Schwarz, a serial guest of Roy Underhill's The Woodwright's Shop, gives an excellent overview of staked furniture in Season 36, Episode 11, which I'll link in the description. I started with a drop from a cherry slab I had. My slab wasn't nearly flat, so I did a quick flattening of it using shims and a sled at the planer. With my stock more manageable, I found the approximate center by drawing diagonals from corner to corner. A pair of good dividers are a wonderful tool for layout in the shop. Here I'm laying out a 12 inch circle for the seat of the stool and a 10 inch circle for the reference for the placement of the legs. The cool thing about using dividers to do this, especially with a three legged design, is if you keep your dividers set to the radius of your inner circle, you can walk out six equally distant points around your circumference, returning to your starting point. If you connected your dots, you would have a hexagon, but if you connect every other point to the epicenter of the circle, you end up with markings for three equally spaced legs. Geometry is awesome. With my layout done, I headed to the bandsaw to cut out my circle blank. There are different ways of making staked furniture. The episode I referenced earlier uses tapered mortise and tenons made by simple but specialized tools which I don't have. So I'm using the lathe and a drill press. To mount the blank to the lathe, I use a wormwood screw mounted in the chuck. So I drill a 5 16 inch pilot hole at the center, then screw the blank onto the screw in the chuck. I was pretty confident in my blank being fairly balanced, so I opted not to use the tailstock so I didn't mar the surface of what would be the show face. I brought the lathe up to speed and used a bowl gouge to true up my blank. This gouge is from Carter and & Sons and it's awesome. I'm going to try to organize links in a more cohesive way from now on, so if you're looking for a tool I'm using in a video, they should be easy to find in the description below, and they will be affiliate links, so if you buy from my links, you'll be helping the channel out as well. With the seat round, it was time to make the angled mortises. Traditionally, this would have been done with a hand brace and bit using sight lines and bevel gauges, then using a reamer to taper the mortise. I wouldn't be tapering my mortises because I don't have a reamer, but I do have a drill press, and instead of messing with tilting the table, I find stacking scrap against a fence an easy solution for drilling at an angle. Here, my mortises will be at about 5 degrees, giving my legs stability. I've had this drill press since I was engaged. I bought it to aid in the making of the ceremonial arbor my wife and I were married under. It's been a great tool to have in the shop, but it's showing its age. I've replaced the belts on the pulleys multiple times, and in this instance, the left hand nut that secures the spindle to the pulley won't stay tight, rendering the drill press unable to bore these holes. No worries, I guess I'll use this as a teaching opportunity and finish the holes with a cordless drill. With the seat done, for the moment, I could turn my attention to the legs. I have some mineral stained, spalted silver maple I had milled some years back that I thought might be cool for the legs. I cut some square blanks at the bandsaw. With my leg blanks roughed out, I found the centers at each end, then punched the centers and headed to the lathe. I could have used a spur center in the headstock to mount, but I already had the chuck installed, so I used the jaws on one end and the tailstock in the center I punched on the other. I made my square into round using a spindle roughing gouge. Along with getting back to inspired work, I'm thinking of doing smaller video segments on woodworking skills to learn, like the differences between a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge. If you're interested in any kind of basics video series in between the bigger build videos, let me know in the comments and I might start a new video series. 
I made the tenons with a diamond parting tool and an outside caliper to match my one inch mortises. My tenons wouldn't be tapered, so I left somewhat of a shoulder on the tenon. I used the calipers to find the fit for the tenon as well as the wider width of the legs, then blended the wider shaft into the tenon, but left a clear line of where the shoulder was. So here would be a great opportunity to branch out and explore design. You could take this time to add sectional beads and coves to make these into bamboo style turned legs. Or you could take these to the bench and make the leg stock octagonal with a plane or a spoke shave. I will be sticking with the simpler legs though. put a small chamfer at the ends of the tenon just to help the tenons into the mortises. I'm using a skew chisel, but I have it turned on its side to use it more like a scraper. After turning the three legs and checking them against each other, I started assembling the stool, or plant stand in this case. To secure the tenons into the mortises, I wanted to wedge the tenon, so I cut a kerf in the end of the tenon at the bandsaw. I used a random orbital sander to clean up some of the tooling marks from the lathe, then I put a small roundover around the edge of the seat. Since I had this on the lathe, it got me thinking of all the design choices I have in the future if I want the seat to have more of a bowl shape on the bottom. Food for thought. Assembly was pretty straightforward. All my tenons fit the mortises well. If they were tight, I used a little sandpaper to finesse the tenon until it fit easily. Admittedly, I was in sort of a rush to meet the holiday deadline and I should have taken more time to match the width of the wedges I made to the width of the tenon. Functionally, they work but there will be small gaps at either side, though it doesn't really bother me too much. Oh, and I should point out I am driving the wedges perpendicular to the grain direction to avoid splitting the entire seat, much in the same way you can use a wedge to split firewood. Now, here is an easy way to make sure your seat sits level to the floor. Place the piece of furniture on the bench and put a level on the seat. Use wedges or shims under the feet until the bubble reads level in all directions. Then, without moving the stool, take a block of scrap and use a pencil on top to mark around all the feet. After the glue dried, I flushed the top of the legs with a hand saw. Do watch out, these saws are really sharp and I shouldn't have had my left hand where it was. I could have easily cut my thumb pretty bad because I was rushing to get it done. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm fine, by the way. Using a handsaw, I have gravitated to Japanese pull saws, but a western saw works just as well. Carefully follow your line, much like cutting dovetails, where you're paying attention to the top of the cut as well as the face of the cut, and follow your pencil line around the cut, letting the saw do the work. I ease the edges of the feet using a makeshift sanding block, and this is really just to stop the feet from splintering out as the stool is moved across the floor. Some 
final sanding, then it was time for finish. I just found this product and it's really cool. They're called Maker's Stain Pads. They are available on Amazon, but more importantly, they are a family owned small business. They are cut to size application pads for finishes. The outside is microfiber cloth, but the inside has a foam core. They seem to retain finish without overloading the applicator. A pretty clever design, and I always love buying from other small businesses, and these work really well. Give them a try. Again, I'll put links in the description. Since I would be using this as a plant stand, I decided to go with Total Boat's Lust Marine Varnish for added protection from any moisture that might get on it. So, there you have it. A new video for the new year focused on new skills for my 2023 theme of new growth. I implore you to give something like this a try. If you liked this video or any others I've made, consider liking and subscribing. This is my first staked furniture piece I've ever made, but I kind of like it. What do you think? And as always, thanks for watching.